Ah, it's January 1st, and I can think of no better way to start the new year than with the arrival of the Edwin H. God of the Great Lakes Fleet to kick off the annual winter layup at Fincantieri Bay Ship Company here in Sturgeon Bay. The 1,004-foot God dropped anchor yesterday evening just east of the canal entrance, and while others are nursing aching heads from revelry the night before, I'm like a kid on Christmas, up at 5 a.m., gear at the ready, and eager to welcome her back home. I don't dare go out any further on this shelf ice than this. It's uh, pretty unstable. The wind has kicked up overnight. It's now about 6.20 in the morning. And the, uh, the goss is on the move. Been out here for about a half an hour or so, and yeah, she shut down last night. We did come in this morning, but it's really foggy, kind of misty. Tugs were clearing out the, breaking up the ice in the canal. I don't know if I'm going to get a shot here, but we'll try. Uh, <laughs> sunrise isn't for about another 40 minutes, whatever sunrise there's going to be, but I thought the fog might have been nice. We'll see. If not here, then we'll go in town. <laughs> I dressed way too warm. <laughs> it's 37 degrees, I think. 35 degrees, something like that. Fahrenheit. About 2 degrees C. You can see the uh, waves with all the sand splashing up there. Like that. This is going to turn out how grainy this footage, I'm sure. I see the ISO is 10,000. There's barely any light out here. So, I don't think we're gonna get much here today. Not here. In town, perhaps. You can see she's lining herself up here. Getting between the markers. Here is a tug. Erica Kobasic. I got the drone set up. And ready to go, just in case. So the got is a big one, 1,004 footer. Oh, she turned her lights off. Oh man. Uh, that's a disappointment. Anyway, she, uh, she was launched in 1979. She was built right here at base ship. And uh, she has a sister ship, the Edgar Spear. They look nearly like identical twins. <laughs> But they're not quite. This is going to look awful. Oh well, we have time to get into town and see if we can get her coming through the bridges. I don't, why did she turn her lights off? The way this <laughs> sandy water splashes up onto the, onto the shore here, it's like, uh, looks like magma, a volcano. I like shooting the boats when they when they come in here. I like shooting from here because uh, we're at a bit of an angle to the canal, so you get a nice shot of the side. And when she comes in, and you have the channel marker, the green light, and the lighthouse channel marker, the red light, both in the frame. So I like catching them just to give it some depth. And she comes behind that green channel marker light and before she hits the lighthouse. So you see the lighthouse for scale in front of her bow. This is, this is a good spot for boat portraits. I don't think I've ever shot any photos of the got before, come to think of it. This is the first time. Good. Another notch in the belt. Another boat. I am going to put the drone up, I think. 
Wait till she gets a little bit closer. She's still only moving at two knots. I'm actually shooting <clears throat> on auto, something I don't typically do. But uh, about 1 30th of a second, F2.8, ISO 320. It was ISO 800 about five minutes ago, so we are getting more and more light. The sun would be rising, if we could see it, straight out. Right behind where the god is right now. Wondering if I should switch lenses here. Well, I better decide pretty quickly here. Yeah, we'll switch lenses. Go with a 24-105 to F4 lens. I like this lens. This is my go-to lens generally. Auto focus, stabilization off. Man, <laughs> she's moving slow. <laughs> Which is great, because it never seems like you have enough time to set up. Man, that's a big boat. 74,100 tons of taconite ore she can hold. By way of comparison, the night the uh, Edmund Fitzgerald went down, she was hauling 26,000 tons of taconite ore. Nearly three times as much. Different design though. This is built for bulk. And of course it lacks the lines that those Lakers, triple class A Lakers have, you know, like the Callaway and the Munson and Anderson. It's hard to convey just how enormous these 1,000-foot supercarriers are without seeing them up close and personal. Photos and drone footage can show scale, but only by being in their presence can one grasp the enormity of space that these things consume. But here's something you might be able to relate to. If you were to peel back the deck the Edwin got like a sardine can. The entirety of the Titanic would fit inside her hull with ease, and there would still be 150 feet to spare. here in the way of photographs, but I think I got some interesting drone footage, something usable anyway. There go the bridges. Approaching the Oregon Street Bridge now.
The Edwin Gap was originally built for U.S. Steel and is a broad-shouldered beast with her curiously undersized hatches, a carrying capacity of over two million square feet, and a 280-foot self-unloading boom, the longest of any Great Lakes carrier. But she's graceful and seems to drift along like a feather on top of the water. So, for the 43rd time, welcome back, Edwin H. Gott, and the mariners who have championed her for the past nine months. Your fellow tribe isn't far behind, and over the next couple of weeks, they'll be joining you for that long winter's nap. And with a bit of luck, I'll be there to follow them in. Thanks for watching. Until next time, stay safe, take care of yourselves, and... I'll see you down the road.